Hi, you are watching our video all about analyzing syntax. If you just heard that noise, it was just my dog. Um, please ignore his noises. We are today going to talk about analyzing syntax. We're going to go over some definitions and then consider how syntax can help to reveal character and meaning in a particular piece. I do recommend that you take notes throughout this video and I will ask you to see your notes tomorrow. So I suggest that you take notes as we go along rather than trying to scribble something on a piece of paper afterwards. The first thing we're going to talk about is some definitions. Um, the first set of definitions are things you've seen before. So when you were younger, you might have heard of these four sentence types. I'm just gonna go over them really quickly so that we all have a common language. In class before, we talked about how analyzing syntax makes you sound super smart. And in particular, if you use these fancier terms to describe basic sentence types, you sound super smart as well. So a statement is also called a declarative sentence. A question is called an interrogative sentence. And that's the one that we talked about in class a few days ago. An exclamation is also known as an exclamatory sentence, and a command is known as an imperative sentence. And it is imperative that you know these terms, you know what they refer to, you know what they mean, and that you can recognize them and then talk about them in literature. So if you don't have these written down, or if they are not in your brain, they need to get there as soon as possible. Okay, I want to talk about another type of sentence that you might have not heard about before, and that is called a telegraphic sentence. Let's talk about Twitter for a second because I think this is going to be able to illuminate the point. So when you send out a tweet, you can only send out 140 characters for reasons I don't really understand, but you have limited space. Because you have limited space, you might, when you tweet, actually be writing in telegraphic sentences without even knowing what they are. The name comes from um, telegrams and way back in the day telegrams were how people communicated across long distances and they were sent out via a telegraph. Basically what would happen is that the operator would get on the telegraph and start pressing this thing here um, in Morse code and it would translate to a particular um, letter and then words eventually. They would type out a telegram. Oops, ignore. They would type out a telegram and send it to whoever needed it. The thing is that companies such as Western Union would charge based on the word, so people wrote things as short as possible. Hence, telegraphic sentences were born. And a telegraphic sentence is simply a no frills and straight to the point sentence. And words may be left out of a telegraphic sentence so that you can get straight to the point. Here are some examples. Conflict subsides. The weather is uncomfortable. Insults provoke. The card is not run, so on and so forth. You may have noticed these in doubt. Um, in particular, I'm thinking of Act 2. That's a good place to go into and try to look for some telegraphic sentences. So no frills, straight to the point, me leave out words, very short sentences, telegraphic sentences. They were short because telegrams needed to be short, much like tweets now need to be short. Okay, so to review, we have our four sentence types, which you probably heard of before. We have telegraphic sentences, which is a fancy way of saying really short, to the point, no frills sentences. And the last literary device that I would like to discuss is something that you know about already as well, and that is a fragment. You may not have thought um, of a fragment as being a literary device, but it 100% is. A fragment is not a complete sentence. It is not a complete thought. It is missing either a subject or a verb and therefore it's not a complete sentence. So an example of a complete sentence would be, her car was old, but very stylish. 
We could break this up into a fragment here. Her car was old, would be a complete sentence because we have subject, we have verb, but very stylish. This would be considered a fragment. Look at how the meaning is changed here. Her car was old, but very stylish. Sounds one way. It's a completely different meaning when you have her car was old, but very stylish. Okay, so now that we are good with definitions, we of course have to bring it back to analysis. It is not enough to just point out these different types of syntax within a passage. This is not a treasure hunt. This is not like, look what I can find. It's here's what I found and here's the meaning behind it. So when you're analyzing syntax, you should always, always, always ask yourself why. And here are some questions that you might think about as you are analyzing syntax. The first being, why is this character speaking this way or using this particular syntax? And what does his or her t syntax reveal about his or her character? So when you think about somebody speaking in um, a telegraphic sentence, for example, if they are no frills and straight to the point in their speech, what does that indicate about their character? Second thing to think about is, why is a character not speaking in a particular way? What does the absence of a particular syntactical structure suggest about the character? So for example, if you see a character only speaking in interrogative syntax, and, does, and that character doesn't have any sort of declarative syntax or imperative syntax or exclamatory syntax, what might that suggest about the character? Okay, and um, another way to think about this, certainly not the last way, but one way that we can talk about is um, how does character A's syntax compare to character B's syntax? What does that reveal about the relationship? What does the syntax reveal about each respective character? So if you have one character who is speaking in an interrogative syntax primarily, and then another character who is answering in an exclamatory syntax, what might that indicate about their relationship? Things to think about. Oops. Okay, um, so let's do an example of this with our fragment um, example. So of course the complete sentence would be, her card was old, but very stylish. If an author intentionally, and you can bet it is intentional, changes this into a fragment, her car was old, but very stylish, what might this author be trying to communicate about this character? Well, it could be a whole host of things. It could be that the author is trying to communicate that this particular character who is speaking in fragments has a fragmented mind, meaning that they have a hard time kind of stringing their thoughts together and they just speak in these short sentences because they are simple-minded or there's something else on their mind. They could be indicating that the character is very conversational and this is just how they talk without regard for any sort of complete sentences or things like that. They could indicate that perhaps this character recognizes that he or she is being insensitive by saying her car was old and then tries to amend for that by adding on, but very stylish. It all depends on the context of the passage, but those could be some reasons for why this has happens and what is revealed about the character. I wanna talk again about the idea of a fragmented mind. A fragment might reveal a fragmented mind. Um, and here we have a passage from A Wrinkle in Time, and I've turned the fragments red. So it was a brain, a disembodied brain, an oversized brain, just enough, just, enough larger than normal to be completely blah, 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 blah. An oversized brain, just enough larger than normal to be completely revolting and terrifying. A living brain, a brain that pulsed and quivered, that seized and commanded. No wonder the brain was called it. So the person who is speaking here is very disturbed by this brain. Their mind is fragmented or coming in pieces. They almost have these bursts of energy and bursts of emotion and their sentences are coming out that same way. So just one way that you can analyze. So to review, things that you need to know. Analyzing syntax is important. Know these definitions, 
know what a telegraphic sentence is, know what a fragment is, and know how to analyze that. We will be analyzing this, um, this stiff in class tomorrow, so be prepared for that, and please come to class with your notes ready to go. I'll see you later. Bye.